Hello. Hello well, guys, today we have number 16, numbers and names, vectors and matrices. This is vector and matrices are a part of so-called linear algebra. You see me okay, right? So linear algebra. Okay, so we'll we'll talk about this. Vectors, we talk about vectors a lot in different in different aspects, right? So today we talk about certain things that are called again connected with the previous uh, previous topic transformations by the way how the how the how the questions are they okay with the previous topic right we, we, we had the graphs and we did the graphs yes okay good 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 there so that was very very good that okay very good. good so now um, mm -hmm. now about vectors and some some features of them okay let's look at the simple Two axes, two number axes, x and y, right? And let's look at some vectors here. Like for example, we have vector like this, right? With the length one. So we we'll yeah. call it we we'll call it vector a, right? For example, right? And we have some other vector like this, and we call it b vector, right? And here it is. It goes along axis x. It's it ends at the point three, right? Yeah. So how do you think if we want two? Huh? So it has a length of two. No, right? it, it's no, three. It has length of three. No, it's it three. three. Okay. So the origin. This oh, is so this is goes from zero to one. This this goes from zero to three. Oh, right? okay. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. now there's a question. Can we somehow get vector B from vector A? Any idea? No, get vector B from vector A. Derive somehow. Vector B from vector A. How do you generate number three from number number one? It's not number; it's a vector. So. Right, but uh, right. yeah. Okay. The question is, what do you think? Can we get vector B from vector A? What What do we do? Uh, 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 I would say you would multiply vector A by three. Right. Exactly. It's pretty simple. It is called multiplication vector by the number. And actually, you totally correct. Vector B, you can write that it's three vectors A. So it's pretty simple. Vector A plus another vector A, right? From here to here and plus vector A from here to here. So three vectors. One, two, three, right? So we have three. The same thing, any vector here will be like any vector. Like any vector C, right? Can be written like some number. C number, right, on vector A, right? Any vector there. Now, for example, if we want to have not this vectors, but vector something like this, which ends at point minus two, can we get this vector, like D, vector D, from vector A? What do you think? Yeah, it's a multiplied by minus two. Exactly. So D is minus 2A, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have the, the, the axis X, right, and have vector A on this, on this axis, right, we can actually find, uh, we can actually uh, derive, get any vector on this, on this axis from the vector A, mm -hmm. right? So just any vector C, we can get by multiplying vector A by some number. Which is called, by the way, uh, co coordinate of this vector. But anyway, this just don't, don't don't go that too far. So some number, right? Okay. Uh, in this case, by the way, in this case, uh, this uh, this vector is called basis vector. Of what vector? Basis. basis. It's okay. called basis. Basis because everything can be can be get uh, can be taken from from basis, right? A, a is a basis. We can, of course, we can choose another basis, right? We can, instead of vector A, we can choose like vector B as a basis, right? Yeah. yeah. And then if we want from this basis to get vector A, what should we do with vector B? Divide by three. Divide, so one third, right? Get one third. So, so we, the same, the same thing, like opposite from here, right? So, what do you get from three to negative two? So A is one. Yeah one third of vector b right so it's exactly from here 
so you can change vector change basis and uh, change cc um, one thing to notice because we're talking about this uh, take a look at this when we change oh, maybe it's too it's too too far okay so we have basis and basis vector now let's think about some other vector like let's take vector uh, like this how to okay that will be alpha vector can you get somehow vector alpha from vector a what do you think uh, um i don't know uh, can we can we find out some number like this to multiply vector a to get this vector? I don't know. How do you do that? It's on a different axis. Yeah. Yeah, they called orthogonal, right? Remember this term? No. Orthogonal. Orthogonal means that there is a right angle between them. Yeah. Right angle. And if you have right angle between the vectors, they called orthogonal. RTH, right? Orthogonal. And um, looking at here, yeah, actually it's right. We cannot get vector, a, vector alpha from get vector A. Yeah. In this case, alpha is called linear independent. Linear independent from vector A of A. Or from a so it's called so this orto orthogonality or orthogonal right it is uh, the same as we say that the, the vectors are linear independent this is a term why linear, independ why linear independent we will see a little a little later okay now let's go to some let let's let's simplify the thing first and uh, we have the same axis right and we do what is usually done we we put two we, we choose bases as two vectors they're called e with the index x and e with the index y the vectors are orthogonal as you see right so they are a right angle between them and usually as a basis can be chosen different vectors as you see but now we have uh, the vectors with the length one so here is one and here is one right so the length length of these vectors <coughs> it is one and now let's talk about some uh, some other vector like for example like this maybe vector c And we think, can we produce vector C from vectors e, 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 X and E, Y? What do you think? Do you remember how to add vectors? No. Do you not remember how to add vectors? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. When, when, when you add vectors, their length increases on a... On. So that if you... Add that, it'll, it'll go diagonally. Yeah. It'll go where? Diagonally. Uh, yes, yes, it's some idea, it's in the right direction, yes. No, yes, you, you're right, you're right. There's called par parallelogram, this is called parallelogram, summarizing of the actors. Yes, you can do it. But we have to find out how to do it, right? How to do this uh, to, to summer to uh, to get a sum of these vectors to get particular vector C, and then it is done in pretty easy way. We we use so-called projections. So we put we put orthogonal. We put line orthogonal to axis x right here, and we call this projection C x. It's called C x projection of vector C on the axis x. And we do the same here. To the y axis. Mm hmm. To y axis, yes. So there's two projections, right? Projections and they are orthogonal to axis because the right angle here and here, right? And what we have, uh, what we have here, we can we can see about uh, two vectors like this vector. This is C x as a vector now, right? Directed with the, with the axis x. 
and cy again as a vector like this. And now it's easy to see that this vector c is a sum, right? It's cx plus c cy. Yeah. It's a parallelogram, or you can see you can you can move it here. It will be triangle, right? Like this and this. You can move this c here. So this is this is the same vector as cy. So this is triangle or, or, or parallelogram rule of summarizing vectors, right? So we have we have this thing, right? And also cx and cy. Now, can we somehow figure how cx can be derived from ex from the basis? Cx can be derived from ex. Yeah, cx from ex. Cx from cx to ex. From ex to cx. Mm -hmm. From ex to cx. You multiply, what, what you multiply by CX? You multiply by CX! By the length of CX. Yeah, by the length, right, no. exactly. Because this is one, right? So just the length of CX, right, exactly. So we can write this. The length is usually, length, is usually den, uh, denoted without the vector, the vector sign above, right? So it's CX, but no, no vector sign here, right? So CX, CX, EX, plus, again, cy, right, naive y, right, and these are numbers now, here they are vectors, c and c, here, here cx and cy is numbers, and this is called expansion, expansion into basis, I think, right, or how, maybe you, maybe you know the term, exact, exact term for this, Antosh, maybe you remember, so, so into basis is good, huh? Yeah, that's good. Expansion into basis. Expansion. So the vector C is expanded into basis, basis E X and E Y. The same thing. The same thing will happen if we, if we have like the third axis, like Z, right? <coughs> In this case, a little, a little more, com a little more complex, but still the same. The idea is the same. We make a projection from vector C to vector Z. There's no rotation here yet. Orthogonal again. It's, remember, it's 3D now, right? Mm -hmm. It can be done in a simpler way, maybe like this. So we project first on this, on the plane, X and Z plane. This is the plane. We project here, we saw right angles here. So it's the plane now, not, not the line. We have this vector. And now from this vector we get projections here and here, here and here. So, but anyway, this all 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 is all may be done with the projections to particular to particular axes, x, y, z, and more if you have more of them, right? Now, again, imagine that we have vector like vector c which is located totally in the plane of x and y it's not go to the three direct the, the, the third direction here third third uh, dimension here z so it's not go out it's not get out from the from the plane of this of this uh, desk mm -hmm. so it's not going here it's all in plane right and we know how expanded to the basis right <clears throat> and now we have some other vector like d here can we produce D from E, Y, and E, X from these basis vectors? What do you think? E, Y, and E, X. So it, I mean, Z goes like this, actually, right? Right <laughs> orthogonal to the to the desk, this this plane of the table, of this of the desk. The, the hint is, can you produce C, Y from C, X? C, Y, C, X. For E, Y from E, X. Dad already asked that question, so you should remember the answer. E, Y. Can you, you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can because uh, summarizing E X and E Y, we only only get vectors that are in the plane, right? In the plane, only in the plane, but not out of the plane. So to get vector which is in three D, not two D of the plane, but three D, you know, volume of our space, right? We need the third vector here, and we can uh, denote it as usual, like E Z, right? vector is z and all three vectors ex ey and dz are orthogonal to each other 
they have right angles between them here here everywhere and they form now the basis of 3D, of 3D space. Like before, the Y and the AX formed the basis of 2D space, right? And the vector AX was the basis of just one-dimensional space is the axis X. It's one-dimensional space. So it's one dimension, plane is two dimensions, volume is three dimensions, and more and more and more, actually, because formally we can produce many, many dimensions. That's what they did. You ask, you ask, guys. You, you ask, I'll... This is... Uh, what would four dimensions be? This is a picture, you understand? We get a little bit confused about the axis. No, no. What, how x and y and z, what do they represent? No. Uh, like, uh, they, uh, Katia has a problem understanding that z is 3D. Coming out. Okay. This you understand, right? X is X is goes like this this direction, right? Yeah. Y is goes this direction. They are orthogonal, right? Yeah. To each other. But they are both in the in this plane. This is called plane. This surface of the of the desk called plane. Okay. You know if we want to find out something like is orthogonal to y and x together all together right i told together some line that is orthogonal to y and to x can it be in the same plane as x and y what do you think any line we want to to put yeah. any, it, it, can it be in this lane or in this well, it can't it should be somewhere getting out sticking out of the of this plane yeah. okay. sticking out so if we stick out like this direction, this will be x is z, orthogonal to both x and y. And actually they say that's orthogonal to the whole plane. Mm -hmm. So it's like exactly like, like we have this, this pen, you know? It is orthogonal to x and y all together. And this is represent the x, z axis. The same, the same thing is done in multi-dimensional space, but we just can't, cannot, I cannot really uh, show it in our 3D space, right? We live in 3D space, so we have some difficulties to use, to, to work with many, many dimensions. But these difficulties are easily overcome when you come to, actually, to the numbers, not to the geometrical, our visions, because it's difficult to visualize like already four four dimensional space is difficult to visualize, right? We can imagine time, but still, it's a little difficult. But like n dimensional space, like whatever, 256 dimensions, right? Kind of how can you visualize? It's very difficult. But with the linear algebra, linear algebra, right? Or the algebra of many dimensions or geometry of many dimensions, you, it can be done by calculations. So calculations are uh, very similar in different different ways. So the first of this linear independent. Linear independence is that, like for example, some vector, vector C, for example, right? It can be represented like this. <coughs> we have some basis, right? For example, like EX, and there we have, we we put we put index here. Alpha Just, X. I, I'll explain alpha alpha X, right? Then plus alpha y e y plus alpha z e z right and e x e y and z are basis vectors of basis in three D dimensions three D. Right? So these these are numbers. So in this case c c is uh, derived from three basis vectors here right. By multiplying each by some number, it is a number. Alpha is a number. Alpha is a number. Alpha is a number. By by some number and summarizing them, right? How how we did it before, right? In this case, C it is called linear dependent from this basis, so it can be expanded into these into these basis vectors. It can be represented like sum of three basis vector multiplied by some numbers. Yeah. And if the C, it is called linear dependent, 
But if C cannot be done like this, then C is linear independent of this, and you should think that probably there are some other dimension, that C is a vector in more dimensions than just three dimensions. And maybe in four dimension, there is the fourth number, alpha something, which we summarize four, now four, uh, four elements, and we can get this C. Maybe not again. Maybe it is a, a vector of many, 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 many dimensions, right? So in this case, if we have many dimensions, many dimensions, we say, we say this, that any vector of n, like n dimensions, n d, right? n dimensions, a vector of n d can be expanded into like this. Now we use not x, y, and z, and whatever, are just numbers. So we use for the first axis index 0, and this is the basis vector for this, this, then 1 plus Sorry. So the sum goes up to the n, right? N, L, n elements here, L, L, n numbers, alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, up to alpha n, where n can be any number. And, and, and actually, actually, it can be even infinite number. So it can go infinitely. So in this case, C will be a vector of infinite dimensional space okay. of infinite dimensions and believe it or not but mathematics work with them pretty fine with infinite dimension spaces and we already touched it somehow I will, I will show it a little, little later so and this is called linear combination by the way this thing is called linear combination linear combination and in this case we see that C is linear dependent of basis of n vectors in the n-dimensional space Nd. that's really interesting yeah that's mathematics is very interesting okay so now let's go a little a little a little further let's talk about matrices matrices ma matrix or Matrix, yes, it's a called matrix. It's a uh, singular, uh, sing singular matrix. This is plural, right? Matrices, right? Matrix. Matrix actually a table is a table of um, of numbers, like the simple way. Come, uh, table of numbers. It's a little more than that, but for now it's uh, easier to say. And the table can be a different table. Like for example, the simplest table is like. 1 and 0. Is this a table? Yeah. Somehow, yeah. It's a table which is, which is called column table, right? It's yeah. a column, right? Column of numbers. Can be more numbers here, right? That's it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, another, another. Can be, for example, like this. <laughs> is that a row table? Hmm? Is that a row table? Yeah, yes, yeah. this is a row table. This is a row. This is column, this is a row, right? Yeah. Now, first of all, uh, what uh, what these columns or, or, or rows uh, can represent, actually? If you think a little, uh, it can, uh, for example, it can represent the coordinates of the vector, like in two-dimensional space, like x and y, right? If this is the first, so this is the first, the count goes like this, from the top down, and here from left to right, right? So this is 1, this is projection to vector x, and 0, this is projection to y. vector y. So it is a vector like this, right? There is no projection to y, so it's 0, and projection to 1 is here. And this actually the same thing. And the difference is, I'll, I'll talk about it a little later. Actually, again, one, the same, right? And now let's try to, to do what is called multiplication of matrices. Multiplication. Multiplication go this way. You take first 
First of all, you take the first number here and first number here, multiply them. So one, one multiplied by one, right? And plus the second multiplied by second, zero by zero. And that's it. And the result is one, right? One multiplied by one plus zero, uh, yeah. just one. So multipl multiplication of these two, of that kind of vectors, it is called actually scalar product. Scalar, scalar, scalar product. Scalar. Scalar, okay, scalar, or dot product sometimes. sometimes. But anyway, so scalar product. Scalar because number, any number, is considered a scalar. It's invariant. Remember invariant? Not changing when you change the basis, when you change the coordinates. So it's just one. So this, uh, this is the simplest thing, right? Now let's try a little, a little more more complex multiplication. Let's multiply it by table like this. 4 numbers. Again, the rule is rule is like this. If you want to get something at the end, at the end of this, it's just known that it will be a vector. Not scalar, scalar, but a vector. So two, 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 so well, two positions here, right? So when we want to calculate this, we do this like before. We multiply this first with this first. So we take this, uh, uh, this row, and again this column, right? So one by one plus zero by zero, yeah. and summarize it. It will be one. We know that, right? And to get another one here, we do second row and multiply again. So it will be one by zero. We will take first and here first. One no. by zero and it's zero no. by zero. one. Hmm? Zero. Yeah, zero. it will be zero. Right. So what we see that this, that this table or this matrix, right, it does not change the vector. See, it was vector 1, 0, and it's, we have 1, 0. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is called diagonal. You see, diagonal is 1 and 1, right? Yeah. So diagonal and, and uh, just unit, unit matrix 1. I think this considered unit. Unit matrix, yes. Unit matrix, yes. Unit matrix, yes. So it's unit matrix. Diagonal because the same thing if you do like, like three dimensions, right? And we have one, 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 and here all zeros. The end will be three dimensional vector, right? And again, what we do? We do one by one, zero by zero, zero by zero. So here is one, right? One. Then we take second for this, and again do that one by zero, zero, zero by one, zero, zero by zero, zero. So here is zero. And again, we get the third. It is one by zero, zero, zero by zero, zero, zero by one, zero, two. So again, diagonal, diagonal unit <coughs> thing <coughs> will give you the result, the same vector. Now imagine that we get something else, a little modified. Diagonal thing, but modified. Like let's multiply it by three. There is multiplication of, of the matrix by the number, when you multiply any any matrix to the number, each element, each element there is multiplied by this number. So if you multiply this by three, it will be here, what will stay here? If you multiply this by three. Oh, um, the zeros will stay. Yeah. Zero will stay, and if one? So one will become three. Three, here is three, and here by four, for example, four, four and four, right? So what would be the result here now? If we have three here and three here? It would be three zero. It would be three zero. It would be three zero. And here will be? Four zero, zero. Four zero. And you see this three zero actually it is 
3 multiplied by this vector. And here is 4 multiplied by this vector, right? So, so what it means is that we if diagonal matrix have uh, have different numbers, but the same numbers on diagonal, right? A vector is just multiplied by some number which is stay stay on this on this diagonal. So that's that's how that's how the whole thing goes. Now a little more, a little what you do if you do matrix by matrix, more more complex like matrix. will be the same thing like we have some numbers like for example 3d right and again zero, zero, zero. Well, it's not zeros there's just some some numbers I would just don't don't, don't want to write them right and you want to calculate the, the result again if we have three by three it's called like this three by three three by three right so three three um, three rows three columns right three rows three columns so the result will be three by three two i would not uh to say some about you you will you will think about yourself why it will be three by three but anyway what, what do you what do you do with these things now it, because it's three by three you can do that if you calculate this thing, right, this thing, you take the first, the first row from here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can take the first column from here and the first row from here. Oh. And again, multiply this by this, plus multiply this by this, and this by this, and summarize, and put here. Now, if you calculate, if you want to calculate this, what you what what would you do? Do you think? The second column times the second column and the first <laughs> row again, because it's the first row here, right? Still this row. So this will be the second column again. Do this and put here. And here is the third, and then and this and then you go to each each in each particular thing. This is called multiplication of matrices. And uh, your papa will explain it a little, little more for that. Now, a little about significant notations here. Significant notations. There is a um, certain things uh, which happens when you change the basis. We we spoke about it before. Like for example, if we move. If we move the whole basis this way, like we are going, uh, the, these these axes, imagine that they are uh, they are put right on your on your car, right? So the car, the whole car, is moving this way, right? This yeah. way. Yeah. What about other things around, like trees, uh, trees, buildings, everything? Or what do, what uh, direction they will go from they your point of view in the car? Huh? Oh, they don't move. Yeah. They don't move, maybe, but from your position, like like you have a building before, right? There's a skyscraper here, right? And yeah. and you moved with some speed here. What will happen with this? It will, it will move the other way. It yeah, will it will go back. Look look what is going on. You're looking out of the window, everything goes back, right? Everything goes back, 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 back. So that's an interesting thing. You know that the building is sta standing in the same place where it is, right? But when we are in the moving frame of reference right moving so the car right car is moving frame of reference when we're moving the whole world is moving back and this moving back it is called contra variant contra because it's contra variant because it's changing right something is changing so we change our frame and all the world goes back it is goes contrary what about our own things like our what uh, what uh, with this basis what we have x and y in the car it is called core there core 
means moving with the basis, with the frame. Frame is basis. So covariant moves with you, and so it changes, but it changes differently. Contravariant changes opposite. This goes with you, this goes back. You understand, right? Yeah. Yeah. The same thing happens if you try not to move, but for example, to rotate. You have certain, again, certain vector, maybe some, I don't know, some, not building, maybe the crane, right? The crane, like the, the leg of the crane, like this, right? You can imagine, right? Yeah. And now you try to rotate your frame this way. So x-axis and y-axis goes like this. So the whole thing. How can you rotate the frame? Very easily. You just uh, move your face like this, right? Or like this. What will happen with, the, with this leg of the crane if you go like clockwise? Uh, well, it'll turn to the... It will go the right, right. Oh, yeah. Wait. The opposite of oh, clockwise. Who goes this way? You turn your face this way. From your point of view, where go this? Where goes this? Huh? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. So this goes counterclockwise. So again, the same. We are moving covariant, right? Our face is covariant. But the, the things, the whole world around is contravariant. So it goes opposite direction and turns opposite directions so this these uh, these um, terms are very significant actually and they all goes about what we call remember invariant invariant means that the uh, that what you mentioned Katya, before that the building and now the crane they are stay in the same position they are not changing right nothing changes it's our face is changing our, our head changing or our car is moving right but the whole world around is still there. So the world, the world is invariant, but it looks to us contravariant. And we are moving covariant because we are changing our, our frame. We're moving, right? We're moving or we're rotating. So these three terms are connected all together. And uh, when they are connected all together, how they, how they do things, how we work with this. Usually covariant, covariant vectors, right? They are denoted like this, like basis vector, because they are connected with the basis. So even the index i, i can be, i can be zero, one, whatever, to n dimensional space or even infinite space, right? I. So it can be many, 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 many vectors, which form your basis or some <coughs> in physics mostly they use reference frame so the frame the basis and the basis is covariant because if we change it it goes with our change right we we actually <coughs> have the, these basis vectors on our car on our face connected to yourself right so they're covariant and what happens with other vectors other vectors have remember have so-called coordinates yeah. Or projections, right? Projections. They're actually the same. And uh, the vector, remember, a vector is as it is, the vector, it is as it is, it is like a vector A, right? For example. It is invariant, the vector itself. It's like a building or whatever. It's standing on its place. But when we rotate our basis, like this way, right? The components of vector, or co there's a other word of components, components, coordinates, they are changed this way, opposite. And uh, that's why, that's why usually vector, uh, vectors like this, they are called contravariant. And the, the notation of this, of these projections are like this. They put index up. You see here index is down, right? At the bottom. Here it's at the top. That's how they. So this is contravariant. It's a very useful notation. 
And also with these notations come another thing. If you have an expansion, remember basis expansion, right? So we have A0, E0, right? Plus 1, E1, right? Plus Rn, En, right? Expansion into basis of n vectors, right? Yeah. It is denoted like this. I and I, you see? And when you see this similar similar indexes on diagonal, right? I at the top and I here, it means summarizing like this. It's a notation. The short notation for this sum, you see, like this, where A is contravariant components, contravariant coordinates of vector A, and EI are covariant basis vectors, like E0, E1, EN, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you have these notations, when you have these notations, it's very easy to remember the scalar product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have two vectors, like one vector is contravariant, right? So like this, and another vector B is contravariant. So it's down, you see, I and down. So this uh, so these these components they changed with your basis and this is go, going contra your basis opposite to your basis change this is together with your basis this is opposite and the scalar product is written like this so it's summarizing components it's a0 b0 plus a1 b1 a3 a2 by 2 and up to n so it's very short, very short notation, and this is scalar product. Why scalar, so why scalar product? Uh, what is it? Uh, we may talk. We may talk a little later. Uh, but why it's uh, why it's very important? Because it is first of all, it is invariant. So it is invariant. And uh, if you think about it, what is going on? You understand why it is invariant. When you change the basis, right? Somehow. Right? B is goes B is goes with the basis and A is goes contra the basis. They actually balance each other and the end is then this this color product is not changed. Okay. So that's the idea. Why it is why it is important. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's uh, useful to say that if you have vector A and B, A and B, right? these vectors, right, A and B. And we have some uh, some angle between them, like phi, right? So the scalar product will be A, B by cosine phi. A and B are length of A and B. So this is length of B and this A. The other, the other thing is, the other scalar product is, which is called metric. It is multiplication A by A. You mean metric? metric? Yeah, metric. Metric. Uh, a by A. So if we have A by A, so instead of B, we use A, right? And the phi is zero here. Because A and the, the other vector, right? Two, two vectors which are coincide, right? So we have for A and A, we have A squared and cosine of zero degrees, which is cosine of zero degrees, maybe you remember, maybe not, but it is one. So it is A squared, so it's length of A squared. And of course, it's invariant too. It's the square of length. So it conne it's connected with metric and actually connected with the uh, with the with the Pyth Pythagorean theorem. Really? 
I'll write it for you, you will see. What? Because you get x squared plus y squared, right? It's a i. A i, right? Summarized by index i, right? So it is a0, a0, a0 squared plus a1, again, squared plus a n squared. Sum of squares, remember? This is Pythagorean theorem in, in n dimensions. So so this is this is why it is the scalar product is important. Okay, question guys for this. No. No? <laughs> okay, just uh, if no questions, just one small thing just for you to think on this. It's a if we have infinite dimensions, remember I promised you, right? No. I mentioned it once, I mentioned it once, that actually the function, like any function, like function f of, the f of x, right? x is argument, f is function. You, you remember this notation, right? Yeah. Like y equals f x, right? So yeah. the other notation for this is f x x is a, as, a, as an index so x may be seen as an index and then f is a, actually a vector is as some vector f in infinite number of dimensions because x x can run through all all the numbers on the on the x axis right not only zero one, but all oh, any any of them, any fractions, whatever, rational, irrational, whatever. It's uh, the number of x actually. <coughs> the number is called continuum. Number. number number of dots on the x axis, right? If you count the number of dots, this number is called continuum. And continuum is infinitely more then the numbers you can count by counting one, two, three, four, five. You cannot count continuum actually. That's interesting. Interesting thing. We'll talk about it some someday. So this continuum number of these dots of uh, of uh, of the axis x or y or whatever it is continuum. It is infinitely more than the number that we can count. Even if we count to infinity, still this infinity by counting. It's still infinitely less than continuum. Continuum is a very interesting, interesting number. Or oh, it's called power. So in this case, if you if you have this as a vector, so we can have a scalar product of this, right? So fx, fx summarized by x, but continuum times, right? Uh -huh. And this think this number, believe it or not, it actually exists in mathematics and it is called integral. Into what? Integral. Yeah. It is, the other notation is like this. But if you use this notation, it will be that notation. But the short notation is this. So this color product is integral. Integral. This is the field of so-called uh, differential calculus or, or just calculus. And calculus. this is huh? Calculus. Yeah, calculus. Yeah. So, uh, so, but just for you to 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 have in mind that infinite dimensions have something to do with calculus and integrals and other differentials. This is called differential. Differential dx. Okay, so just just to mention, right? So so that's, that it goes much further than maybe some people can can think. Any question on this short thing? No. no. Okay. Okay, guys. If no questions, then I have questions, right? Yeah. You remember that, right? And I have uh, pretty much questions because this theme it. It actually demands some calculations 
on your side and you should do it yourself with the help of your father right and uh, we will go this way okay uh, please get a uh, get a paper because you need okay, to write ready. something ready yeah okay Richard, come back. the first thing first we have three vectors right three vectors one zero zero but this maybe a x right then another is zero one zero this is a y and the third is zero zero one this is a z right and we have three matrices matrices one is like this it is named sx another is minus i remember this complex numbers right and the third is and this is uh, named sy and this is sz and this is like this one minus one zero zero this okay no i, I can't see anything oh i'm sorry yeah you, you're gonna have to wait because i'm gonna have yeah, to sure, sure 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 it's one one minus y Ma minus i i one minus one okay by the way these uh these matrices uh matrices are called pauli matrices pauli is for the name of one famous physicist okay <clears throat> Hold on, well, I'm, not, I'm not done writing down the list. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. What are you talking about? I remember that. Oh, yeah! Okay, the first of all, first... I'm not, I'm not done. Oh, I'm not done? Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> They're simple. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. They're just basis vectors, remember? With three, in three dimensions, right? Yeah. Are you good? So the first question is, get scalar products. Well, these, these, they are columns, right? They usually, they usually denoted by X with at the up at the upper position right and this lower position they are actually they are rows the only difference so the same vector like a a x a x with the zero with the, with the x at the bottom will be the same vector but as a row you got it right yeah so the scalar products this scalar product then this scalar product and this color product. Calculate. Got it? <coughs> Got it, right? Now, the second question is the same thing, the same thing, but calculate that. We call it IX prime, right? IX by SX. So it is vector AX multiplied by this matrix, right? Then AY prime is the same thing, SY and a z prime it is a z by a z so you get prime a x prime so this is this is this is actually is called the change of basis so you change the the basis vectors a x a x a and the z right they actually basis is you see they are orthogonal and they uh, have length of one each one 
So you multiply them by matrices, particular matrices, and you the, the, this 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 way you change the basis, right? I can't see the question. I don't know if I'm supposed to be writing down right now. I can't see it. Yes, okay. yes. You can see this? Okay. Yeah, now, now I can see it. That's the question? That's the full question? Yeah, yeah, that's the question, yes. The first was product, remember. This is this one. Oh. AX prime equals AX times SX. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see, I see, okay. Now the same thing, the same oh, thing. Ah, fun, well done. A Y prime equals Y times S Y, all right? Now the same thing you do, you did this with contravariant, right? Remember X up, right? Now do the same with covariant. This is done like this. The matrix is on the left side. And this, of course, is a row. And here it is a column, here it's a row, right? So the same thing with S, Y, A, Y, and S, Z, A, Z. So it will be, so what, what I mean here, this is contravariant, new contravariant companies, this is new covariant companies. With the same matrices, we change, we change the basis. <coughs> and when you calculate this, it's, I can't see the the uh, the last question. Okay, thank you. Mm, so. It's just the same thing by different order. Yeah, because yeah, because actually, if you use rows, if you think about it, right, you cannot multiply them in this way. You can multiply them only this way. They are opposite. Mm -hmm. So S stands on the other side of the. Okay. Okay. So you calculated A X prime and A X uh, co covariant prime, right? And now calculate the scalar product of it, of these vectors. So A X A Y A Y A Y is easy. The scalar product. Okay. okay and uh, the last, the third question. Three questions from, from here, right? Huh? I got three questions from the uh, from the vectors and the matrices, right? I think it was two, but anyway, you have three, you don't have three. No problem with this, whatever number you have. Yeah, the third, the, yeah, scalar product, yeah, maybe the third question. Now, the fourth is, the fourth is just for you to, to, to train yourself, right? So, <clears throat> multiply this thing, SX, SY, SY, SZ, S, Z, S, X. These are multiplication of square matrices, right? Each to each other. Okay. And compare it with S, X, S, Y, S, that. Just a Z. Just look at them, what you will get. Result of this, result of this, result of this, and compare. Okay. So the comparison is introspective or each multiple? Just compare, just look at it. How they, how they, do they have any, any similarities between them? Sx, Sy, Sy, Z, Sz, Sx, right? And compare with Sx, Sy, Sz. All, all these matrices. This is multiplication of matrices. That's all, guys. A little more uh, more calculations but uh, when you train yourself you will get we get it easy okay okay, okay. any questions on this on, on questions no yeah. okay yeah. okay okay guys so see you next time 
I finished recording now.